My name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Got quite a bit coming at you in this particular episode. In a little bit, we'll be visiting Jeb and Glafia and Chrissy aboard the Corian uh, as they get ready to do their flyby of Minmus and uh, which is actually only a temporary stop for them on their way to exiting the Kerbin Sphere of Influence to be the first Kerbals to exit the Kerbin Sphere of Influence. Um, also going to be seeing a redesigned Otter 4. That's uh, a, uh, a jet plane designed to go out visiting various Kerbin biomes and uh, collecting some science. Redesigned that, didn't quite like the old design. But right now, as you can see what I got here, is my Model K. You might recall the Model K from a few episodes ago. Uh, it had a little bit of an accident on the crawlway, so I'm going to be a little bit more careful with it this time. Uh, it also had some transmission issues because I neglected to put any batteries. Sort of the weird thing about this little rover is that although it is electrically powered, that electricity is being generated by fuel cells. In other words, it's burning fuel just like a good old car but of course, this being Kerbal Space Program, we're not concerned about climate change. And in fact, as far as I know, uh, this is the only place where anybody any li lives anyway, so there aren't that many Kerbals to even contribute to uh, to rising CO2 levels. But anyway, uh, the extra batteries certainly allowed me to do some transmitting, but they still used a lot of electrical power, and the time it took to recharge was longer than I normally would like. So there we go, that transmission is now complete. What would probably help is uh, maybe doubling up the fuel cells so this would charge up quicker because I would have to do like a time warp. That would charge up the batteries again and then I could do another transmission trying to squeeze out as much science as I can out of each of these little biomes. And then I would do, after this one transmitted, I would recover the science once again and this time I would store that into the cockpit. And this obviously took quite a while and uh, well at one point boredom kind of got the better of me and I decided to see if Bob could climb up these stairs. I don't think I've ever been up these stairs before. Obviously you can see I'm going at four times speed to try and get this over with. Unfortunately when I got to the top all there was was this door. So uh, Bob decided he was going to take the quick way down Let's see, oh, you know what, I should do a quick save before I do something really dumb. So let's do a quick save. And now we're going to climb up. Hmm, doesn't seem to want to climb up that one. Nope, let's try over here. Alright, Bob. We're going to put on the RCS and we're going to thrust up and we're going to see if we cannot, uh, we can survive this. We thrust up. So Bob, it's one small step for a Kerbal, one giant splat for Kerbal timed. Okay, there we go, pressing H, splat. Man, you know, Kerbals are tough. <laughs> anyway, uh, the rest of this, I, I, I'm not gonna show you the rest of this. The rest of this was just collecting science from the different biomes, also made my way out to the grasslands and to the shores, and uh, after that decided to call it call it a day. So why don't we get ourselves out to the Corian. Now a little over two days into its mission you can see Kerbin and the Moon way back there in the distance. So what we got to do is we got to perform ourselves a bit of a correction burn. I got this 15 meter per second correction burn because uh, Minmus is quite a ways north of the equatorial plane of Kerbin. Okay, we'll get rid of this alarm clock notification, letting us know that we are about well, five minutes away from the node. But I want to take show you uh, my sort of plan here, because I'm not just going by Minmus. I'm using Minmus to affect my trajectory. Um, one of the things I want to do is I want to exit the Kerbin Sphere of Influence pretty close to the equatorial plane of Kerbin. I don't want to be inclined too far north or too far south. So as you can see here, my trajectory, my closest approach to Minmus is actually a bit north of uh, Minmus's equator, so that my trajectory will be redirected back towards the south, with the idea being that uh, when I exit Kerbin's sphere of influence, I will be as close as I can be to the equatorial plane 
of Kerbin. And the reason for that is because I want to come back into Kerbin's sphere of influence with an inclination as close to zero as I can because I got a rendezvous with uh, Kerbin Station, which of course is an equatorial orbit around Kerbin. Now you probably noticed that I have a second maneuver node right at my closest approach to Minmus. And this one is mostly prograde, a little over 100 meters per second to prograde. And if you add that 100 meters per second plus a prograde plus the 50 meter correction burn that I'm approaching, um, I am, you know, this is by no means the most efficient way to get out of Kerbin's sphere of influence. I am definitely burning more fuel doing all this messing about than I am if I just burn straight out, but I, I want to fly by Minmus for the experience, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, so yeah, I'm just sort of playing around with both burns. The red trajectory is my trajectory after my encounter with Minmus, and I think it's getting close enough that when I exit the Kerbin Sphere of Influence that I am close enough to the equatorial plane of uh, Kerbin. So uh, I think I'm just gonna go for it. I'll probably tweak it some more, but uh, why don't we just go and perform this correction burn right now? Okay, it's only about 50 meters per second, so it doesn't take too long. And we are, oh, there, here comes our trajectory. Getting in close to Mimis. Again, I want to match, of course, that green one. And whoa, whoa, let's stop. Oh, I am, uh, I am way to the south of the equator. That will not do. Um, yeah, if I have to tweak my periapsis, I'll do that. But I do want to get my inclination close to the right spot a little bit more whoa whoa it's twitchy okay that'll have to do oh I'm about five kilometers away from the surface that is too close but we'll tweak that later uh, yeah that won't be a problem we'll tweak that later and then of course we'll probably end up tweaking that uh, closest approach burn as well uh, but that won't be coming for a little little less than five days from now so uh, time to get ourselves back to Kerbin we are now a few days later, and this is the Otter 4A, a slightly redesigned Otter, and out here with Tamley and Bob, checking on the science that we've already collected. So uh, we've already we're in the Highlands here. We've already collected some science. I'm you know I'm part way into this mission already, and it's time to get Tamley aboard and get on to our next place. And oh wait, oh she can't get on. The module is full. Oh yeah, of course it is, because Bob's in there. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, this, this uh, capsule is the only, the cockpit's the only way in or out, so I gotta transfer Bob to the crew cabin behind there, and now Tamley can get aboard. Anyway, like I said, we're in the Highlands. We've already collected some science. Uh, I thought I'd just start this mission just part way through, and then uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head off over towards the deserts, maybe pick up a little bit of mountain science on the way. But this is my redesigned otter. Uh, I, I don't know, I thought the, the older one just looked kind of goofy. It worked just fine, but I thought it just looked goofy. So I, I took off the canards that were at the front and replaced them with elevators that you can see there at the back. And I think it's, uh, it silhouettes a little more normal. I say normal like it's a good thing, but I don't know, I think it looks a little better. Oh, grabbing, we'll grab a little bit more atmospheric science over the highlands on our way. Yeah, and then I think what we'll do is we'll get ourselves over to the desert and see if we can pop by the mountains on the way back to the Kerbal Space Center. But before we do all that, I got a new mod I want to show you that was recommended by a viewer. This is the Minimum Ambient Light Mod. And what it does is it comes with this little slider that I can adjust and turn up the light for these sort of nighttime ports. Now you can turn it up ridiculous like that. That that looks ridiculous, I think. So find a nice spot where hopefully you can still get a good view, but it still looks like it's night. I think right around there is good. I'd heard about this mod before, but I was a little bit reluctant about it um, until I s saw the slider. The slider is really what sold me on the thing um, because I was worried about what it would look like in the daytime and all that kind of stuff, but the fact that you can slide it up and down I think is, is great. I didn't want to affect the look at any other time. So uh, now when I'm in these sort of nighttime scenes, I'll slide it up a little bit like you saw there. Otherwise, I'll keep it back down there at zero. Uh, and hopefully that will make 
some of these nighttime portions of these videos look a little bit better. And by the way, if you're wondering, you notice again I got Bob again as my scientist, and you might be wondering why aren't I getting other sci- I have other scientists and Bob's. Well, Bob is my only level two scientist, so any um, missions that don't involve getting experience, because none of this is going to get experience for any of my Kerbals, but does involve collecting science, uh, Bob's going to be my guy. But anyway, uh, off to the desert we go. Everything should be routine in this one, and I thought this was going to be all a pretty routine mission, and it was, until the dang it mod reared its head. Oh dear, a control surface is stuck, and it's very clearly that, that elevator at the back there, that's uh, going to be about pitch control, and you seem to have a bit of pitch control, let's check it out. So yeah, all those are inactive now, that makes sense. Okay, this pitch says it's still active, so maybe I should turn that off so that it's balanced. And whoa, 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 wait, whoa! Oh my god! Okay, wait, wait, wait. Holy jeez, I'm less than 600 meters from the surface. Let's get the heck out of here. <laughs> that was a little scary. Okay, okay. You don't want to mess around with this stuff close to the surface. Let's get some speed back up. Okay, so I don't have pitch control according to this, so maybe I should put some pitch control onto these Aerions here, like make them roll and pitch. Okay, I'm back in control again, so let's put pitch on to that one and that one, and nope, no, 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 I'm diving, I'm diving, I'm diving, I'm diving, oh my god, get out of here, I'm not that far from the ground. Okay, turn that off. Stop it. I have no oh thrust! There's the ground! Oh my god, that was close. Okay. Okay. Let's get some altitude. Because there is safety and altitude. And think a bit about what we're doing here. Um Landing, I don't think I'm going to go for a landing here in the desert. I think that would be, rather, you know, with the sort of flaky pitch control that I now have, I don't want to have something like that happen as I'm on my way down. So probably going for the water would be the best idea. I think since the 1.05 update, I think ditching in the water is easier than landing than going on land. You know, I, I seem to have control again. I'm flying fairly level. So all I gotta do is come in level towards the water and just get my speed nice and low. Should be fine. And besides, uh, water's a biome. I'm not put this atmospheric scanner into the water yet so I can collect some science from the water easy enough. This thing definitely has a tendency to wanna roll to the right. So I have to keep correcting the roll, which is sort of annoying. Obviously something to do with that stuck control surface. You'll notice I have RCS on and that's because I have the reverse thrusters of this engine uh, toggled with the RCS group. So I'm in reverse thrust mode though I have my thrust down to zero. And the plan is that as I get in really close, I'm going to engage that reverse thrust and try and just drop into the water as slowly as I can. So we are coming pretty close here. Here we go, let's thrust up, which of course is thrusting back, really. And we're slowing ourselves down and... Here we are. Okay. Well, that feels good. <laughs> we, are, we are, well, not terra firma, but on the water, floating comfortably. Okay, and then we'll get... Uh, We'll get Bob out. We'll get Bob out to do some science. We should be... Okay, there is science in there, so uh, Bob's going to have to get out there and collect it. And... Oh, yeah. I can't get Bob out first. I first have to get Tamley out, because Bob has to exit through the cockpit. That's the only way in and out. So I'll put Tamley out here on the wing, and then we'll go back and get Bob. Oh, there's a pause here for the auto-saving. How annoying. Okay, and... Oh, what? Oh, what the hell just happened? Oh my god, where are my Kerbals? Where's Tamley? Tamley, where are you? Oh, it says... Okay, well, there's Tamley. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tamley. Okay, she seems alright. Oh my gosh, Bob! Bob, where are you? 
We're gonna, I'm gonna swim for you, Bob. I'm coming for you, Bob. <laughs> I know I could switch over to Bob, but I got kind of, kind of in a castaway mode here. You ever seen in Castaway and Bob Hanks in the water? Or, you know, actually maybe even more, this is like the beginning of Bioshock Infinite. I wonder if there's a lighthouse around here somewhere. Bob, Bob, you have to be okay, okay. I do see the crew cabin there. So I do have to assume that Bob is okay inside the crew cabin. He was inside at the time that happened. I don't know what happened there. I got a feeling that uh, the buoyancy physics got a little out of control. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Well, let's just check to see if Bob is safe and sound. Switch over to there. There's Bob. Hello, Bob. Can you come out? Bob can come out. Oh, he can actually exit out the end here now. Can he reach the science there? Nope. Now, I've been getting all these warnings about uh, life support being depleted. Uh, maybe I can climb up there, but I want to check. Ah, Bob, get back up. <laughs> Okay, let's check the life support and everything is red. So rather than screwing about, I think it might be best to just sort of end this. So why don't we get ourselves back to the Karayan? The Karayan is just about to cross into Mimis' sphere of influence and up there it goes. Okay, wait, I got the wrong Kerbal Engineer stuff here. Okay. Alrighty, there we are. Okay, so um, this is actually our third time out into Mimis' sphere of influence, so uh, might not be a whole lot of science, but let's see what we can get. So, uh, Materials Bay, and we got two. <laughs> oh well, I mean, it's there. We'll go grab it, and uh, let's see. Uh, Mystery Goo says that we have... Da -da -da. Point nine science, so yeah, well, okay, we are clearly at the end of usefulness of that, uh, and we'll be sending Chrissy out there to go collect it, but once that was accomplished, it was time to sort of take a look at why we're here in the first place. All right, so grab on, get aboard, and there we go. We've transferred over that pitiful little bit of science into the orbital module, but uh, what I'm really interested here in is taking a look at the experience that these folks have. We'll start off with Jeb here. So you can see with Jeb, Jeb's at five experience points, but he's getting three for this flyby of Minmus, which he'll be awarded as soon as he gets back to Kerbin. So that puts him up to eight. And Glafia here is in exactly the same situation, being Jeb's partner in crime in so many missions. Uh, but according to the KSP wiki, Getting into orbit about the sun, that should be six experience points. So that should bring them both up to 14 when this is all said and done. 16 is supposed to be what gets you to be level three. So as you can see, they would be very close to being level three when this is all done. Uh, landing them on the moon or landing them on Minmus should likely put them over the top. But what I really want to take a look at here is Chrissy. Now Chrissy's at seven experience points right now. She's going to get three for this flyby, putting her to ten. So boom, level two right there. The six more for exiting Kerbin's sphere of influence, that's going to put her at 16 right on the cusp. And I'm really very curious actually if that will put her to level three or not. Because the, the cutoffs are supposed to be two to level one, two experience points for level one. Uh, eight for level two and then 16 for level three. Well, I've gotten a couple of, I've gotten Kerbals to eight and not gotten level two. You have to get past eight. So, but two does get them to level one. So I'm a little bit confused on whether 16 will be level three or do you need to pass 16 to get level three? Well, at the end of this mission, we will find out one way or the other. Anyway, in the meantime here, you can see that we are approaching our closest approach to Mimis, and I will make sure once I get into space near Mimis that I will take the opportunity to grab a little bit more science. But uh, our main purpose here is to perform this 109 meter per second, mostly prograde burn. Um, the main purpose of this burn is, well, one is to adjust its trajectory, like I was explaining earlier in the video, but also uh, we don't quite have enough energy to exit the Kerbin Sphere of Influence just yet, so I need to uh, give myself a little bit of a speed boost here. Uh, if I plan this a little bit better, uh, this burn actually pr probably wouldn't have been necessary at all. It would have been better to uh, have given myself all the energy that I needed back when I did my uh, 
first transfer burn way down in uh, low orbit about Kerbin, but uh, oh well, I didn't give myself enough energy at that time, and I did want to make sure that I was going to hit Minmus, so uh, well, here we are. We got the fuel for this, so it's not going to be a big deal. I'm also trying to exit the Kerbin Sphere of Influence with as little velocity as I can. The less velocity I have when I leave the Kerbin Sphere of Influence, the less velocity it'll take me, and there we go, the less velocity it'll take me to get back to Kerbin, and oh wow, 15 and a half days. <laughs> That's the price of leaving slowly. Whoa! <laughs> Anyway, uh, so that's going to bring to an end our crew's all too brief encounter with Minmus, and it will also bring an end to this video. I thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.